Hi folks. So I'm making this live stream tonight with the help of my friend Adam Brewer, who is a burner from Los Angeles. He's been a great advocate for Bernie Sanders, and now he's turned his attention towards SB 562, which is the California single payer bill here in California. And we've been working together as have so many Bernie supporters and Bernie Kratz um, since the election to advance the agenda of Bernie Sanders. So when I called him to ask him if he could come over and help me with the video, he said, no problem. The reason I'm making this video is I'm really pissed. And I'm going to try to not seem pissed because there is a person who really yells at her audience all the time and is really angry and I find it hard to watch. And I really want you guys to watch me tonight. So I'm going, hopefully this, this anger that I'm feeling is going to be a little underplayed because I don't want to scream at you, okay? Because I know that you're supportive. But I have to tell you what happened to me today. Today, I spent three hours posting something for my candidate for California State Democratic Party Chairman Kimberly Ellis onto Facebook, onto 141 Facebook groups. It took me three hours this morning. When I tried to post to the 142nd Facebook group, I was stopped. Now, I assumed it was Facebook's algorithm just kicking in after they see you making multiple similar posts um, over and over and over again. And it was just a matter of time. I just had to wait it out. This has happened to me before. So went about my business, came back, and three hours later decided to start posting again. And the first time group that I tried to post in, I got a message saying I had been blocked from posting in Facebook groups until May 29th. <clears throat> now I've been a Facebook user since 2008. And this is the first time I've been put in what they call Facebook jail. Now, I know this has happened to other Bernie supporters and other activist friends of mine, but this is the first time it happened to me. And I thought, huh, very convenient, May 29th, seeing as this election that I was posting about for California State Party Democratic Chair is on Saturday, May 20th. So um, I decided to ask people, other people, if they would post in the remaining Facebook groups, including my friend Adam, who is taking this video right now. And he told me, couldn't find the post. Couldn't find it in our Revolution Los Angeles, and he couldn't find it on my Facebook page. But I could see it in all those places. So isn't that deceptive? Facebook makes me think that my post is still there, but nobody can see it. They deleted a post from my own Facebook page. So I was so mad, I put, I'm suing Facebook. And then of course somebody wrote what is probably true, that I have no case because I probably signed some user agreement when I uh, signed up with Facebook, basically you know, signing away my rights to do anything. And that's what life is like in these United States where these corporations, they can take all my data they can own the copyright to all my data, all my photos, all my posts, everything that I've ever posted, and sell it to advertisers, can share it with the NSA, but I can't sue them when they delete my own First Amendment freedom of expression. All right, so I'm going to read to you this post, and I want you to tell me if you think it's worthy of being removed by Facebook. Here's the post. Were you pissed that the Democratic establishment stole the DNC chair's race from Keith Ellison? We have another chance to beat them in California with your help. Kimberly Ellis is the Keith Ellison of the California Democratic Party chair's race. She was endorsed by Our Revolution and Nina Turner. The election is next week in Sacramento. <clears throat> Her challenger, Eric Bauman, is the worst kind of establishment Democrat. He is an old style party boss who conducts business in today's version of smoke filled back rooms and who bullies and intimidates people who disagree with him, like Bernie Sanders supporters. Plus, he took $12,500 a month from Big Pharma to lobby against a ballot initiative that would have lowered prescription drug costs for 14% of Californians an initiative that Bernie Sanders held rallies to support.
Kimberly made a pledge not to take any corporate money, oil money, big pharma money, etc. And she has disclosed all her donations on her website. Eric has not. Like Bernie, Kimberly has been endorsed by the California Nurses Association. Bernie Kratz won 67% of the elected delegate positions in January. However, elected delegates make up only a portion of all the delegates who vote. So just like with a national convention, we need your help lobbying our California superdelegates to vote for Kimberly on May 20th. Attached are nine pages of information, including contact info for all the superdelegates we need you to call and or email. Please help win Bernie's political revolution in the largest and most powerful Democratic Party in the country. Hmm. Was there anything obscene in there? Anything inciting people to violence? Any hate speech against a particular group? No, just a person, me, advocating for her candidate, Kimberly Ellis. So, what am I to presume? Obviously, what happened was either Eric Bauman or one or more of his supporters got wind of this post and reported it to Facebook. Now, if Facebook actually read the post, they would see pretty standard campaign stuff, right? So what the fuck? One has to wonder if from being the vice chair of the California Democratic Party, Bauman has connections to anyone at Facebook, whose top executives, including Mark Zuckerberg and Sheryl Sandberg, are huge donors to the California Democratic Party. <clears throat> For the most part, delegates who supported Bernie Sanders are supporting Kimberly Ellis. So this is exactly the kind of treatment we have come to expect from establishment de Democrats who rigged the primaries against Bernie Sanders, who covered up our signs at the, de at the convention, who put on white noise machines to drown us out, to turn off the lights in the Washington delegation so they couldn't see our signs, uh, and now who are saying in the DNC lawsuit that they don't have to play fair, that they don't have to be impartial, that they can nominate their candidates in smoke-filled back rooms just like they used to. One of the reasons that I called Eric Bauman a bully in my post, which is probably the worst thing in there, is that I was personally bullied by him at a Democratic debate watch party in the winter of 2015, right here in Studio City. I had never met the man before. I went with a fellow Los Angeles for Bernie member, George No, and I had only heard about Eric from other LA from Bernie volunteers. The stories that I heard were abominable. I'll just repeat one for you. LA for Bernie had a table outside the LA County Fair for 10 days. And we um, had Bernie materials. Now, occasionally our people went inside the LA County Fair and saw the Democratic Party, the Los Angeles Democratic Party table. And they were always running out of Bernie materials. So naturally, we had plenty. We offered to replenish it. They wouldn't accept it. The people sitting at the table said they were told not to accept the material. We contacted Eric, we contacted Clark Lee, we contacted whoever else works for him. The names escaped me because this was in August of 2015. And never were, were able to get any traction on that. And then I found out that two women whose names I will not disclose because everybody is afraid of this man. He's like freaking Bill Cosby. Everybody's been bullied by him, but nobody wants to come forward and I'm coming forward. And I'm gonna show you a video in a minute to show you just the tip of the iceberg of what I experienced.
Let me ask you this, though. I mean, I agree with what you say about the elevated debate, our side versus their side, but don't you think that the journalists do have a responsibility to try to discern differences between the candidates, especially since Hillary has come around and supported so many of Bernie's positions now that they're almost indistinguishable? I actually totally disagree with your point. I actually think that Hillary supported those positions long before, and she has always enunciated them, and I think there's a reason why she's at 52 to 58 percent in every national poll in America. So I know what you're trying to get me to say, but I'm not going to get there because America actually loves Hillary and America is very clearly going to elect her the next president. But I wasn't going to have this fight. Very clearly going to be elected the next president, but I wasn't going to have this fight. Was I starting a fight? I merely asked him if they did, if he was didn't think that the moderator had a right to ask uh, the candidates to try to distinguish themselves from each other. Okay, so let's continue. I actually, I actually, have, I actually have gone out of my way to not be a partisan in this race, but since you're trying to put me in that spot, since I'm trying to put him in that spot, is there anything that I did to try to put him in that spot? Okay, let's continue. I'm prepared to take you no, to my the first, toes on the this. No, my first, the first pair to take you to the toes on this. I've never heard that expression, but it sounds like he was asking me to go out in the alley and have a fight with him. I'm prepared to take you to the toes on this. Let's continue. The first part of my sentence was really the thing that I wanted to ask you, don't you yes, think? But that wasn't the part that you asked me, and that wasn't that was the, the second part. So you're not going to suck me into this. I've been doing this. Well, how about, how about you, Anne? I'm not going to sucker him into this. You're not going to sucker me into this. I've been doing this too long. Sucker him into this? Okay, let's continue. Answer the first part of the question. You know what? Here's, here's the bottom line. Hillary Clinton's positions are very clear. There's a reason that she is at the top of every poll. Yeah, because she's more actually, well known. Because you know what? No, actually no. Oh, because she is the most proven. And because she is where most of America is. Who wants some beers? <laughs> right? He escalated. He's escalating this thing. So the guy says, who wants some beers? Obviously, this has become a tense situation because of him pointing his finger and bullying me. Okay, let's continue. I'm not willing, I'm not willing to turn this into that because if you heard my speech last Sunday night, you know that my whole mantra is about not Democrats coming back together. And then he got out of his seat and came across the table and jabbed his finger into my face while calling me a bully. He accused me of using classic bully tactics. Whoops, what was the last thing? And called me honey twice. Okay, I'm a 58-year-old woman, and he called me honey twice. So then I told him, I, I, I was like this at this point. He was in my face, jabbing his finger. I told him anything that I could think that just, I was so flabbergasted, I said that I was going to write this up for the LA Progressive where I write. And he said, fuck you, write what you want. My friend George then put his arm between us, whoa, to put some distance between us, and Bauman says, what are you doing? I wasn't going to hit her. So... Is this the person that we want to lead the Democratic Party? Okay, there was a whole room of people there. You could identify some of the people sitting there on the table by their face. You ask if this didn't happen. The reason I wrote this down and I wrote all these words down is I contemporaneously, that's what they call it in a court of law, if you document what happened contemporaneously and you write it down, and I wrote it down in the event page for that debate watch party. I wrote down the whole thing. I chronicled it. And I wrote it down in a Facebook exchange with George No, because I, I was so, um, uh, what's the word, uh, frightened by him pointing his finger in my face with the ire and the venom and calling me honey and cursing at me that I wasn't sure that I remembered the situation accurately. So I asked George to write down what he remembered him saying and him doing. So this is very clearly what happened. Now, 
Um, in addition to him being totally wrong about Hillary Clinton winning the presidency, I mean, what a laugh that was, and saying that she's had these positions her whole career, the man has no clue of what Democrats need to be doing right now. When he was, he was preaching unity to us back then, like we should all unify the party. This was when Bernie Sanders was t getting traction against Hillary Clinton, and he's talking about unifying. Who, did he, who was he expecting us to unify behind? Bernie? I don't think so. I think it was his candidate that he was favoring the entire time that he was supposed to be impartial. And, and now... They're talking in the, in the California uh, delegates page about unity and how we have to have unity going forward. But what does that mean to the establishment Democrats? If you look at what they're talking about, they're saying unify and beat Trump. It's all Trump, 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 Russia, Russia, Russia. There's nothing about a positive program for the Democratic Party. Bernie Sanders is the most popular politician in America right now because he talks about issues that the American people want to hear about. Tom Perez doesn't. Chris Hayes asked him if he would support single-payer health care. He couldn't even say yes. He had to spew some platitudes about health care being a, a right and not a privilege. Well, of course it's a right, but how do, how do you mechanically make it a right so that all people can get it and all people can afford it? through single-payer Medicare for all, and this man cannot support it. And Nancy Pelosi, who is with Chris Cuomo tonight, doing a debate, which, by the way, her challenger, Stephen Jaffe, who I had on my show a couple of weeks ago, Stephen Jaffe uh, emailed and called CNN to find out where this debate was, to find out if it was in San Francisco, if it was in her district, to find out if, if it was, since it was called a town hall, could her constituents attend this town hall? How were the questions answered, asked? Were they canned questions? Did they get to choose which question they wanted her to answer? You know, he never even got the courtesy of a reply from CNN. So he held his own town hall on the Progressive Army, and you can go to their Facebook page and watch it. No, they want to have unity, but they don't want to offer a positive program for the American people, okay? So that's Kimberly Ellis's platform. Kimberly Ellis talks about how the Democratic Party has lost its way, okay? How when she grew up, how her Southern grandma told her that the Democrats were the party of the poor, that Democrats were the party that fed the hungry, okay? The Democrats were the party that provided for the needy. But that's not what the Democratic Party does anymore. No, the Democratic Party goes after corporate donations, okay? And they don't want to upset their corporate donors by talking about banning fracking or talking about single payer. Kimberly Ellis stands behind those platform planks as well as all the other platform planks of Bernie Sanders. So you know what? If you want to tell Eric Bauman, fuck you, back, and you want to tell Facebook, fuck you, back for, for censoring me and deleting my post, and you want to help Kimberly Ellis become the next leader of the California Democratic Party, send me an email. My email is lauren at losangelesforbernie.org, L-A-U-R-E-N, and I will send you the packet where you can call these pleos, as they're called. These